Good morning. I'm Jeff Howard. I represent the uh, Office of Climate Change at the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Uh, I've been in, uh, an environmental analyst uh, there for about a year and a third at this point. Uh, there's a lot about DEEP I'm still learning. I, so I'm going to introduce you to some things about DEEP today that you may or may not know about uh, that I don't know a lot about and that if you're intrigued by those things, I want you to get in touch with me. My cards are on the table and I will help you figure out the answer to your question or find the connections that, that you're looking for there. Um, I'm going to actually stand a little to the side so I can glance over my shoulder from time to time. I'm going to uh, talk briefly about four things in, seven, in six minutes. What's the state of Connecticut doing and, and, and uh, what's the context of, of what I'm bringing to you? What, why do communities in Connecticut need to be aggressive partners um, in uh, addressing climate change? What can they do and how can the state help? Next slide, please. So, next slide. A quick, just don't try to digest the details here. A couple items up there of, of note. The Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. Connecticut helped lead the development of the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. In 2008, uh, Connecticut passed uh, what is really seminal legislation that, that gives us a foundation for doing uh, climate change work in this state. The Global Warming Solutions Act, which Melissa already, already mentioned sets a 2050 target for statewide emissions of greenhouse gas emissions, excuse me, statewide target for greenhouse gas emissions reduction, 80% reduction from 2001 levels by 2050. I'm gonna repeat it, 80% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions statewide from all sources from 2001 levels by the year 2050. Next slide, please. Those are curves or for emissions from 1990 through 2012 for different sectors. You'll notice that all of them, except for agriculture, excuse me, except for uh, waste, have peaked already. So even transportation, the top curve, peaked 2004. So part of the good news here is that we have succeeded or, or are in the process of succeeding in, in arresting the escalation of greenhouse gas emissions and are beginning to bring those, those down. Next slide, please. There's the, a snapshot from 2012. The big, uh, the big gorilla in the room is, is the transportation sector. Uh, in many states, it's the electricity generation sector that is the gorilla. In Connecticut, it's different because we've already, we've already succeeded in bringing down the electricity sector uh, emissions to a su substantial extent. Next slide, please. Another bit of the good news is that we are in the process of succeeding in decoupling our greenhouse gas emissions, which is the bottom of the green line, from both growth in population and growth of, of the uh, economy, the state economy. We need more of that, obviously. If we're going to get to that 2050 target of 80% reduction, we're going to have to decouple them even more, even more strongly. Next slide, please. Um, yes. There's the challenge ahead. The dotted line at the bottom is the 2050 target. We have 35 years to get there. We have brought down emissions from 1990 levels. Emissions peaked in 2004 for all the sectors as a whole. We've achieved a 10.5% reduction from 1990 levels. And our next challenge is that 80% reduction by 2050. Next slide, please. A big tool has recently, has just this past week, in fact, uh, been launched. The governor, Governor Malloy, uh, created a governor's council on climate change. It consists of the heads of a number of, of state agencies, it consists of, of, the, of representatives from three uh, non-governmental organizations, including uh, Mamie's um, Institute for Sustainable Energy and CERCA, Rebecca's, Rebecca's group. Um, and the challenge ahead for this group, or the, the, the mission of this group, is to set 
some interim or to, to recommend some interim targets because there's a long distance between the 2020 target and the 2050 target. Uh, next one, please. We have, we'll have an interim, tar interim report by December 31st, and then if, uh, an additional report sometime next year, probably. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> the organization of the group, let's, let's skip ahead. Let's, no, let's skip ahead, let's, let's go on here. Let's, that's a good, uh, back to that for just a moment. One of the objectives of the new council is to develop models of leadership uh, at a variety of scales. So the state level, state level leadership on climate, what, is, what are the best models available for that? Municipal and regional government, what are the best models for municipalities leading on climate change? Uh, business and industry, NGOs, and then models that cut across all those. Next, please. So we're looking for examples like this uh, that, help, that help us figure out how to move ahead to close that 35-year gap between, between where we are now and the 80%. Please, forward. OK. One more. So there's the, there's the, there's the big challenge. Municipalities, I argue to you, are in a, in a position to, to in a pivotal position to help the state move forward. It's hard for me to imagine that the state is going to be able to get to that 2050 goal unless municipalities are not just, don't just have clean energy committees and don't just have some renewables and some efficiency work going on, but are looking ahead and are calibrating their efforts in part on the basis of this, this 2050 target for greenhouse gas emissions. My suggestion to you is that the 2050 target ought to be helping you calibrate your understanding of, of how much work remains to be done and, how, and, at the, and the pace at which that work needs to take place. Next slide, please. And one more. So some initial suggestions, and I'm gonna stop here. I'm sure I'm over time. Um, about where, where you can, how you can plug in, how we can conceptualize the work of the task forces uh, in, in, the, in this context. Next slide, please. One more. Just some quick tools to, to put up here. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this web page. This web page is a little bit out of date. It's not easy to find, but there's a quick um, short address there about how to get to it. It has quite a a array of, of um, tools presented for municipalities to think in this climate in this climate space and how to connect energy work, land conservation work, et cetera, to the climate challenge. Next, please. There's a new page on brownfields, clean energy development on brownfields. Maybe you haven't thought about the uh, electric vehicle project and program in Connecticut as part of what's relevant to municipal engagement in clean energy. You need to be thinking in those terms. Next, please. The state is in a position to help in these ways. If you don't know how to make that happen, don't know who to turn to, use my card on the table, please. Next slide, please. I was asked specifically to talk briefly about microgrids. I won't belabor the point. There's, there's work to be done there, um, and I will help you if you want to think about that and talk about that. Uh, in fact, uh, another card on the table there beside mine, Veronica uh, in our Office of Energy Supply is the go-to person for this. Her card's on the table, please. That's it. <laughs>